guys, welcome to the Creative Mastermind Show. Today we're with Cesar Santos, who's an American artist born in Cuba. He's a classically trained artist navigating the contemporary art world today in some of the best art galleries, such as Maxwell Alexander and Waldman Ortega in Miami. And he's very impressed. He was just in Miami Art Basel, which is, in my opinion, the top art trade show in the world that has celebrities the likes of Puff Daddy and Rick Ross visit to buy art. So I was very impressed with that. And uh, he even finished the Angel Academy in a blazing one and a half years when it took everyone else to do it in about four. And last but not least, he's a renaissance man of many disciplines with a very interesting past. He won a gold medal in boxing in Sweden. So you're going to oh, hear about it in a little bit. That's pretty impressive, <laughs> yeah. All right, so so the first thing we would like to start with you is, can you please tell us a little bit about your your beginnings? Now, we know that you were born in Cuba, and uh, you moved to States at a very young age. Can you tell us about your childhood? Did you grow up around up artists? Or yeah, well, guys, thank you so much for doing this and inviting me to you know speak to you guys. Yeah, so yeah, I'm looking Quite forward to this Our art pleasure. conversation. So yeah, thank you. Um, well, I'm Cesar Santos. Uh, thank you for you know, reminding me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was born in Cuba, and I think uh, the the lifestyle there was so different that it helped me adapt with enthusiasm here. So the whole my whole base, I base my any any career that I'm creating on that, and I think that's you know your beginning yeah. years is very important. Absolutely. So I did have uh, quite a quite a a trip growing up in Cuba because of the situation and the, you know, just uh, family stuff and, and you know. It's a very vibrant, very, very kind of active life. Yeah, it's kind of wild. You know, yeah, you're yeah. in the middle. It's like you're an animal in the jungle, yeah. you know? So <laughs> you have to kind of compete with the worst people and be around them and know yeah. how to deal with things to get, to get right. it, you know, going your right, way right, and stuff. Right. So, yeah. So, but I didn't do any art in Cuba. Okay. My uncle, you know, it's a, famous painter there and I had some influence from him looking at him work in the studio but it wasn't anything formal mm -hmm. it could have been me and my sister we went through the same experience we went both uh we'll go to his studio or go to his show so right. it wasn't something particular to me mm -hmm. uh, but it did leave an impression and I think um, that b started building my vision to become a painter as a as a profession as a career okay so in a way I kind of saw it happening and uh, even though he's an abstract painter I got into something else, but that's just general stuff. But right. the main idea. And when was your introduction to a, an art course? When did you say, okay, I think I would like to learn how to draw and paint? I think it was here because in Cuba, I was doing different things like boxing and uh, okay. track and field and doing all this stuff. And then here, my parents saw the, the circumstances of the whole society and they mm. say, focus in one thing. Yes. Mm. And then that's when I started uh, after I think high school is when I committed to mm -hmm. becoming a painter because they also, it was a um, school at the design district and they didn't have any sports. So I had to make sure that I wasn't going to become a, a, you know, an athlete or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, it was very art focused. I had to do extra work in school because you mm -hmm. had extra classes to take in art and architecture and design. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I had, so that's the development. I started with a solid work ethic too because mm -hmm. i was living so far from school okay. and that school was like a special thing that it had to be that school yeah. so i had to take a bus then a train then another bus to get to school back yeah. and forth every yeah. day for whole high yeah, school yeah. Years. so that built up a very good mm. foundation I think. so it's no wonder that when you got to angel academy you were one of the most intense students there so tell us about angel academy it was one of the pioneering art ateliers at the time, right? Yeah, well, that, that time came after four years of me studying contemporary art in yeah. college here, in yeah, an yeah. art college, uh, New World School of the Arts, and which was part of uh, Miami-Dade College for the first two years. And after I got my associates, I was heading towards my uh, bachelor's degree with the University of Florida. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, I realized that I wasn't learning enough for me to sustain myself and to depend on myself instead mm. of depending on a galleries that will pick me up because they, you know, because of my concept or something. So I, that's why I didn't like music or acting or boxing because it depended a lot on other people's organization mm -hmm. for me to thrive. So I decided that art was something that I always did, something that I loved, and also something that I could do by myself and kind of take, 
you know, the whole role by myself. And then, yes, have outside influence, but not as much as a musician. You need the whole band. You need the sound guy. Mm-hmm. You need the... So so that also guided me to focus um, mm-hmm. more narrowly. And when you when you were talking about your university uh, uh, school, uh, so were you not satisfied in terms of uh, the the technical aspect of it? Is that uh... yeah? I needed more tools, so I mm-hmm. dropped out uh, a couple of classes before graduating and went to the Angel Academy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, bef- a year before, I was already you know talking to my parents about this possibility. Yeah. But for us, we immigrated from Cuba. We didn't have resources, and we are in this you know situation that looked like impossible to be yeah. able to afford you know a, a school in, in florence mm-hmm. so but we worked on it and it's a good thing that my family was a solid yeah. kind of nucleus uh, yeah. thing so, so they, they were very uh, supportive in yeah, they, yeah they did yeah. whatever Beautiful it was thing. like a teamwork they yes. did anything possible for me to make it happen so the reason i was so intense in at the angel yeah. academy is because i didn't have resources to not be yeah. you know i was forced to be able to just focus on my art yeah. i didn't have money even to buy outside anything outside or go to a movie theater. Um, that's an amazing thing. And I think, it, do you think it may have helped you? Because maybe a lot of art students right now, if let's say their parents are paying for it, they may not appreciate it and they may yes. not use it to fuel them at their school. I saw a lot of that. Like mm-hmm. a, a lot of people just being comfortable with the situation. So they get expectations and they act differently that if you're desperate, like if you're in a desperate position and you have all the money that you will spend there and you have a limited amount of time, you have no time for playing. You're like, okay, yeah. I need to get this. So these people know how to paint better than anybody I can find to teach me. And I thought, I mean, Angel, his skills and the way he, the poetry that he created with realism uh, was unmatched. So I said, I'm gonna go there and learn that. So I was very submissive and yeah. very focused on what I had to do from his teachings. So, Do you feel like this attitude has to do with the way you were brought up in the way where you know, you were talking about your earlier childhood where it's it's kind of a, the, you know, a bit of a rougher, uh, you know. Well, at school, they hit you. Like in Cuba, they will hit you with a ruler if you're <laughs> sitting in the wrong position. Like yeah. you have to sit kind of like, it's like kind of like a military school because mm-hmm. it's communism training you mm-hmm. yeah. to be something. So they do enhance that you, you, um, the teacher is superior and you have to listen and you have to do so. Yes, exactly. That influenced mm-hmm. me because I'm like, okay, these people know something I don't know. I'm going to yeah. be quiet until I can know, until I do and that. That's a great mindset too, because I see a lot of students that don't have the, the teacher's superior mindset, which the teacher's not always superior, but at the same time- Teaching is. To, if he's there, he's the he's superior. He's, uh, he's the one teaching you something that yeah. you don't have. No, exactly. You're there to learn from them, but I see a, a lot of students kind of questioning their teachers where i feel like that kind of stifles their learning because you're there to learn from this person Mm -hmm. and might as well allow them to take the reins i know i know what you're saying like in the time because i i jumped quickly but i think they might have faults Mm -hmm. of their own and and you cannot focus on that you should focus on their strength because anybody can find michelangelo to be an idiot if they want to (laughs) search for it yeah but that's not the point the point is that we are all idiots and some people are special and that's where you need to focus on on the special part now the Exactly. And additionally, to be fair, you uh, maybe after doing four years of uh, of school here uh, in in states, you realized that maybe the teachers you were studying with were not giving you the information that you needed, and then you found a master who was uh, perfectly aligned with your interests. So someone who was classically trained, someone who was able to draw from observation. And uh, this is when you said, "This is what I want." There is a man who know who knows how to do it. I should go there and I should listen to uh, to what they to what they teach. Yeah. No, and the important part I think the lesson from that situation is that why do I need why did I drop out? Like what was the reason? And it's not only going with my gut, you know, intuition. It's also I saw it as an opportunity. I said nobody here is learning how to do that mm-hmm. at the time my environment in Miami, you know. Yeah. And I said if I bring if I love this so much, people were mocking me for it because it was mm-hmm. an, an easy decision. It's like, man, I'm stopping something that I been building yeah so it's easy to see it now it's like oh cool but the that decision can change or break like can do some damage too Absolutely. if you're too crazy and reckless yeah. so for me i i logically thought and that's why building up a whole year before deciding to go to the school uh intensely you know thinking about it was uh was useful because we we said okay the the point of the degree mm-hmm. is for you to have a, a 
an establishment saying you pass this test. Mm -hmm. But if you do it yourself, you can show it without the degree. So, yes. you know, and at the end of the day, I'm bringing something also that people are missing. So then I'll be exotic on top of the yeah. thing just by learning something from so far away or like of mm -hmm. course of course yeah, so. of course but this idea of of you traveling i mean you're, you're a young guy yesterday we had a chat and you mentioned that you were 22 if i'm not mistaken when you yeah. went to angel so you're a young guy and there it goes this, this big decision uh, you know flying across the ocean for like a new adventure um and and i guess you were very convinced for it like you were really really ready for it but uh what, what was it like so there you are in, in florence uh you're starting to study yeah i mean i was so intense into it i i for me it was a it was a dream you know to go mm -hmm. to go there and i kind of revised because i got there on a friday school started on monday and i went a couple of times to school to learn my path. Yeah. And for, I mean, even the smell, I remember it. Like I went so intensely and so positive. I think yeah. the state of mind is what will guide you. Yeah. Gratitude. It sounds like your mindset was on the gratitude that you get to be in such a place. And yes, that... full-time gratitude, full-time positive mm -hmm. thinking. Like it was like, this is doable. I will learn this. Because mm -hmm. also it's, I mean, you go in there and some advanced students are doing stuff that you never tried. So yeah. you look at their work and it's easy to say, wow, I might not belong yes. here. Mm -hmm. And but, also like you have a big smile on your face, like right now just talking about, like clearly you can tell like how excited you were to be there, right? My God, yeah. Were yeah. those some of your favorite times? I still times? go there. Like, I go back and I mm. see the students there yeah. and they're like complaining and having problems. <laughs> I'm like, this is paradise. You don't know. What yeah. else yeah. do you, you know. want? Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. true. I know that Jordan and I, we felt the same way when we went to Watts Atelier. For me, I just quit a marketing career, which is totally not art. And just doing what I want to do for the first time, I was so appreciative of yeah. being there that it was one of the happiest times of my life, I have yeah. to say. Yeah. Well, it's also, I, I think it's it's such a narrow niche. Um, maybe something that uh, you've done before has to do with it where, while you spent four years in uh, more of a contemporary art circles. And maybe it's like that, that lack of information that you've been searching for four years and maybe after sp spending four years. In my personal <laughs> case, you know, I've studied uh, with Jacob Collins in, in New York. And I remember just before I went to study with him, this is exactly what I was lacking. I mean, the education was good. I, I have a degree in illustration and it was good, but it was almost like that next level that I was missing. I could do a, a portrait. Mm -hmm. It didn't necessarily look exactly like that person. I, it kind of looked good. People around me were saying, wow, this is good. You can draw. But there's something inside of you that says, if you won't take next step, you'll lie to yourself. You're not, you're not doing exactly what you, what you want to do. And going to, to a place like that, especially this is, uh, what year was it? 2005? I left college 2004. I started 2005, January. But just to be clear, my school here had just was lacking mm -hmm. the, the knowledge of classical training, yes. but it was incredibly useful. Yeah, like course. I would even recommend it to people mm -hmm. because I learned the real connection with the art world because okay. they are part of the establishment. And yeah. if you're if you want to be an artist of your time, you cannot be selecting time periods in your mm -hmm. mind. I I always thought that it was contemporary. And the the funny part is that I was just lacking a specific skill. Yes. And and I went to Europe to thinking not loving 19th century art. I mm -hmm. went there because I wanted to use the tools that I have to. Look at that and paint it. Yeah. And then I started loving it and learning about it. But for me, it was more like a practical thing. Mm -hmm. And it was an addition to my schooling here, which I, which was great because, for instance, students will sit around and criticize your work and you yeah. get tough, you know, because yeah. people don't like mm -hmm. you personally and they might yeah. look at things in your art and go That's for it. Funny. So you build up this strong position oh, and yeah. defending your point of view. And that's needed because mm -hmm. if all you have is skills, the other skills that you need for, you know, to survive in this world is, you know, they're needed. So. Oh, that's very important. And that's what makes you special to me is that your approach to the art world is so informed by what's happening and you're really plugged in. And I think that you probably have that university to thank. So. Mm -hmm. I would like to know what was your, um, so you started, Florence, uh, you started at the Angel Academy in Florence and what was your motivation to keep yourself disciplined? Because at first we were all excited about something new, something that's different, but at some point things become repetitive. You know, you maybe get comfortable. How did you keep up this mindset of, okay, I've got to stay serious. I've got to stay focused uh, on on being there every day. And well, how much were you like, how much did you work at time the, uh, the school yeah, time? Yeah, Angel yes. Academy. Like how much, how hard did you work at that time as a student? As much as, 
possibly I could, like as mm -hmm. much as I possibly could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't meet anybody working harder than me mm -hmm. by right. measuring it. So I know that for me, it would have been a little too much working more. Like, mm -hmm. but I did my best. Like I got, I got, even I applied to work at the school because at that time they didn't let people work in the school outside of school hours. So mm -hmm. I would get the key to clean and then I would go inside and work on it. So that's, that's smart. How, and Valentina yeah, behind the <laughs> camera there uh, knows because I met her immediately when I got there and she kept me company and we would go into school and she mm -hmm. would read our history to me and we'll talk about stuff and I would work. So even my dates will be in school or, yeah. th or talking about art or drawing. <laughs> I'll be like, you want to join me at the Duomo? And I'll draw something. You talk to me all you know, So I was, yeah. And there's nobody else doing that. You you were the only one kind of after hours there during the night. Some people were, but I wouldn't. I think it was waves. Yeah. You know, they would get intense and then they would soften a little bit. Yeah. Like I just kept going, going, going Did because you? I tested my max. Okay. Did you inspire like you know any of the other guys around you? They saw you going so hard and were kind of like, oh, we should we should also stay late. I think too. so. I think so. At first, when I'm there in the situation, it looks a little bit like a rebel mm -hmm. attitude. But then they believe it because it's so real. I wasn't acting, yeah. so then they did. And after me, like a lot of people got faster and faster in time yeah. because they broke that oh, mentality of intimidation. Oh, this has to take this amount of time. And I'm like, I'm from Miami. I'm Cuban. No, yeah. it doesn't. It's a paper like this. Fill it up. Make it happen. You know. <laughs> I love the simple. <laughs> Yeah, instead of like, just, oh, just, this is yeah. a masterpiece. But like, no, this is a piece of paper with graphite on it. Yeah, like, yeah. Just That's so funny. make it happen. You know? Yeah. You know, what I really like about that is that you weren't afraid to be different than the other students. And you kind of took your own schedule and you weren't afraid to set yourself apart, which may or may not alienate you from the class or it may even inspire you. But it's a thing that I think a lot of people have a hard time doing because they kind of copy their peers and how hard their peers work. But you weren't even looking at that. You were working on your own schedule. Yeah, yeah. I had my own background, my whole life, and my, my own thing. And and yeah, I was just competing with myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you are, a year and a half later, with a diploma from Angel Academy. That you completed a four-year program in one and a half years. And yeah. I, I mean, no, knowing a bit about, about you, not only that was not enough, then you go, you decide to come back to States. Yeah, and uh, from from what I know, yeah, well, that was the least of the problems in my career. Now looking back at it, I'm yeah. like the school was like kind yeah. of challenging, but it was the easiest part, okay. you know, because you're at mm. least in an environment that is protected, and some people are guiding you. All you have yes. to do is work hard. Yes. But once you're by yourself, be like, okay, now how do I build my house? You <laughs> it's, <know? laughs> yeah. it's a beautiful part of your life to be a student. It's it's got a different type of stress because it's a whole different thing from having to start selling to just learning and uh, if you're a student right now these are some of the best yeah. times in your and art like career. the answers are there right when you're a student like there's a course you know an atelier system that's been laid out for you right yes. mm -hmm. the second you finish that you're like in uncharted territories right there's like past other people have kind of walked but mm -hmm. you're going to be doing something different Caesar now you graduated from Angel Academy and what was your next move what was your strategy well, I didn't have time to waste, so I couldn't say, let me see what I feel. So for me, it was very practical too, because since we came from a mentality of being poor, I needed to make it happen. I needed to make a career, you know, a functioning career. So as I said, when I started approaching my end, I started thinking how to prepare. And then I started reading more books and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, learning from my university years, you mm -hmm. learn, you train, you, um, you get involved in developing a series that touches you personally. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you, every artist, you know, develop a system or yeah. a voice kind of thing. And that's when the series comes into play. You develop a series, but it's not a superficially, you know, not, not a series that you think of it logically. It's something that you have to look at your past, what you like to do, and then do it in the best possible way. So I said, okay, the last year at the school was still life because okay. that's like full color. Mm -hmm. You learn everything you learn, you put it into practice. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm gonna start now. I get into my parents' apartment, which because they sold the house to pay for my education. So they moved into this small apartment, but they had a, a room. Damn. So I come in and I told Valentina uh, at that time, give me a couple of months so I can settle in. I don't want to approach my mom. I'm like, listen, I'm bringing in a wife. <laughs> We're going to live in your apartment. I don't want to freak them out. So then I said, um, give me a couple of months, two or three months so I can develop a series. And I'm pretty fast and I'm focused. So I knew my time. I could make seven or eight paintings. Mm -hmm. And wow. I said- the, In a two month period, eight paintings. One yeah. painting per week. That's, That's yeah, incredible. Well, if you paint 16 hours a day, mm -hmm. pretty much that's what you get. Um, but I set up the still lifes, uh, like a setup, mm -hmm. the same as the, the Angel Academy, because that's what I train into, that's what I learned. So I set up the thing and I just, mm, 
gave it a twist that had to do with my attitude, my, mm -hmm. you know, my uh, yeah. temperament, you know? Mm -hmm. So so then I did that and I did a series of that. And then I, I started thinking where to present it and how to do it. So that was my strategy. My strategy was like, build it up, give some time so you can build seven or eight paintings and then look at opportunities that come after doing that. So even from the first one, I will go to shows and I will show people a picture or I'll take the painting and I will show friends to measure because you get measured by society. Society mm -hmm. is the one giving you feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and if they buy something and it's an endorsement, I keep doing what you're doing, I pay you for it. You know, so I, I started receiving feedback from people immediately. So I adjusted my series according to the feedback that I, that I thought. Because okay. for me, art, I could be wrong. I mm -hmm. don't want to be stubborn and say, I want to do this mm -hmm. and have a clear vision because I might be wrong and that might not work. So yeah. I'm like, let me do this combined with the reaction of people. Mm -hmm. and then see how can I make that happen. So. You know, that's really cool because I think a lot of artists would lean towards kind of getting an entire series done and being a kind of a completionist before taking action with the series. But you started taking action as soon as you had your first painting just to get a feel for it. So it just goes to show you don't have to have everything be done and perfect. You can just start as soon as you have the first thing and you could kind of step from there yeah, yeah. you always want to keep your mind open and just uh, see what what else is uh, there that you can improve in order to advance further mm -hmm. yeah so then i, I the, so the question was oh do i approach uh kind of an easier to get gallery yeah. do i approach like the best thing that i can envision at that point um what do i go so we had a different encounters like my dad kicked out a guy one day from the house because he came in negotiating and trying to buy my series or half of it for mm -hmm. cheap and he, he was psychologically intimidating me telling me you won't be able to get into such gallery when i mentioned the one i wanted to get into he's like that's impossible you have no uh record you have oh no shows God. so i can put i can help you that's fine he was trying to sell something he was trying to buy but selling an idea okay. so I, I agree with him but my father was sensitive and he, he thought that guy was gonna influence me so he's like get out of here and oh, it like, sounds like that guy didn't really even believe in you right he just kind of saw like a little bit of potential to make some money it doesn't sound like he wanted to invest in you long term maybe that would have been a better way to go like i never you know yeah. i don't know because yeah. the guy but the mo the thing is i like, got that moment it was tempting mm. to give him and get the check yeah but i'm like what I thought was like, maybe this is amazing, but this is a sign. Yes. If he's acting like this, I have something of there, value. There, Let me explore yes. my possibilities with this. Maybe he's the last, the only crazy guy in town. I'll go back to him in a month and say, listen, man, okay, three paintings for less. But, so so, yeah, so I, I kind of said, okay, so this is good. I'm calling the attention. The fish is biting. Let's see where, I, you know, so then I... I decided to just go and approach the gallery that I wanted to be in mm -hmm. to begin with. And yeah. it's amazing that you had patience like that because you had a lot of pressure at the time to start monetizing, making money and to make it real. And you're probably really waiting for that to happen. So to be able to say no to the not right situation is a huge strength on your part. Yes, and with the help of my family too, because yeah. like I said, my father said that and I'm like, that's funny because he could have been like, sell it, let's make money right now. Why yeah. are you waiting, you know? Yeah. But he didn't do that. He said he believed in the foundation that I was oh. creating. So he's like, wait, 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 get out of here. And let's that's, build. A, that's, that's amazing. It sounds marvel. like your family has been so supportive and amazing in your journey. It's really awesome to yeah, hear. Yeah, I'm but. lucky. And that's something I don't, you know, it has nothing to do with me. So that's something mm -hmm. I, like, I was put into. So yeah psychologically we're balanced like that. As long as you love someone and you understand, I think mm -hmm. it's, yeah. So at this point, you kind of had one guy show interest, you were clever enough to say no. And a lot of people will be very intimidated, especially after what the guy has been saying, like, oh, you've never done anything, you can't make it. How do you have the confidence and the balls to approach galleries with no connections? Oh. Well, I, I mean, I, I got in the ring with more dangerous people than gallery owners. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, gallery, gallery owners are pretty soft. <laughs> I don't know why I did not balls for that. Uh, um, That's funny. I don't, I thought- It's a new well, part of the workshop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before you become an artist, become a boxer. Yeah, once you got punched in the face, you're like, okay, yeah. this guy's gonna be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I know what, you're, I know what you mean. Uh, I think the intimidation is on you to not fall into 
to, you know, because th that is something that humans do. They're always measuring people and having habits that cancel other people out. You know, if I say fuck off and you get crazy because I missed a, a word and I say something bad and you get distracted by that, that's on you to get distant from me, but it's not my fault. Like I was focusing on something, let's say. So for me, I said, okay, that's a guy, he has a business, he wants to thrive, mm -hmm. I'm an artist, he represents artists. If I bring value and he can make money from me, he's gonna be talking better about me than my family. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna love me. Yeah. So I didn't see anything, like my relation to the gallery. The only thing that I was thinking about, how do I approach them so that we can communicate instead of playing the character Mm -hmm. game of who is who and who's superior than who. So yes, if you go into the gallery looking like you're lost and, you know, and then the, someone wants to filter you out, they can intimidate you and you leave. You were meant to leave. You're not, you don't belong there. Mm -hmm. But I think we're humans. And if you come in knowing what you believe in and talking to people in a, in a normal way, and then uh, they can talk to you. I think people are, you know, people are always communicating with each other. So yeah. all I need to do is transcend that barrier so it's kind of your your sense of confidence or your sense of intrinsic self-worth comes through in your actions and i bring this up because i know a lot of artists that are actually great painters but they're for some reason very they lack the self confidence, uh, confidence to value their art and they wouldn't go and approach one of miami's best galleries not in a long time so the fact that you're able to do that is very admirable because there's so many great artists that just wouldn't even try and mm -hmm. this mentality also i have to yeah, say a lot of people told me not to even try so yeah that's exactly that's true. Yeah. because there's this mentality of okay start slow start from the like beginner's gallery and then go to uh you know highest and what you did is you said to yourself okay what's the highest uh gallery in, in miami and this is what you did. You just went well, I mean, and the whole, th but the whole thing comes with the with the preparation and a strategy because mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, you cannot approach something and expect it because you just feel confident. You know, yes. you have to be realistic. And I said, okay, I have no background, I have no experience. Yeah, I paint, but that's the least thing for in his view. Yeah. So when I started approaching him, I was already thinking of ways to give him value and show mm -hmm. him that he will be winning if he represents me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what you create. Like you, you have to know your value. So what strategy did you use to attract your first gallery? Well, that's a long story because even like I, like I said, like if I say it, like everything built up on top of things, you know, mm -hmm. like first thing I want to make sure that I bring something to Miami that is exotic, that is true to my taste that I develop, you know, so the art had to be to the level that I think it will fit in the place. So that's the first strategy mm -hmm. is to study art for like eight years before that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and I painted a lot and I, you know, I've always been working. So the first thing is to be an artist with material mm -hmm. that represents you in the best possible way that you can uh, manage. Yeah. So did you feel worthy when you were doing this? What do you mean? Like searching for your first galleries. Like, did you feel worthy? Like you belong there? Was yeah. it in your kind yeah. of heart? Okay. Yeah, I had to believe it. For, yeah. For, yeah. Otherwise you go in with this intimidation. Yeah. That's what you mentioned bit first that um, before that some artists are, are afraid of. Yeah. If yeah. they're afraid of, it's better if they are, because mm -hmm. that means that they are not even ready mm -hmm. to, sh they don't even believe it because when you're, you know, if you want a glass of water, you're thirsty, you get the water. Like mm. there's no, like, should I drink water right now? <laughs> Do I belong in, yeah. you know, does it belong to In the water drinking yeah, Just get thirsty, yeah. just get thirsty yeah. for being in the gallery. Do I deserve to drink <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so for me, the whole thing was just like, uh, how do I get in touch with him without, without being like a loser approaching a winner? Because yeah. you, if you start a relationship like that, it's hard to get rid of that first impression. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I kind of went a couple of times to the gallery so they will see my face. I'll, I'll go and talk to some artists there. And uh, I, honestly, getting involved and hearing, listening to them and learning from the, what they want and what their vision is. And then after that, I went a couple of times and, and one day I was driving a car with paintings um, with me, you know, mm -hmm. and I went over and there was a hurricane going, uh, happening in Miami. Mm -hmm. So they were distracted and I passed by the gallery and I saw them actually carrying paintings. So this is like, this is my best moment. Instead <laughs> of saying, no, let me not interrupt. I said, they need help. Let me go. They know me. So they probably can use me. So then I went there and he's like, oh my God, what a great, what are you doing outside? I'm like, oh, whatever. I passed by, I have some paintings here, but I want to help you out. And we kind of started talking outside of the 
frame mm-hmm. of art and career stuff. It yeah. was more like, oh my God, but this, uh, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, you know, gas prices, stuff but like did that. Did you even know you're a painter at this point or? <laughs> Not so much. He's like, I've seen you at the gallery before. A couple before? of times, yeah, okay. recently. So you were like a familiar face. Not that familiar, okay. but I, for me, it was because my, my mom went there with mm. my uncle's portfolio from Cuba okay. bef- when I was in high school okay, and okay, he okay. rejected my uncle. Mm-hmm. Uh, even with works in the National Museum. So he mm-hmm. was, he had that tough atmosphere about yeah. him. Mm-hmm. And so, and in, in a way for me, it was a challenge because, oh my God, he refused, he rejected my uncle. Yeah. Let me make sure that I go there like well-prepared. Yeah. So, but, uh, so we talked and he was nice enough to say, oh my God, uh, come back another time to, so you can see these works because right now it's crazy. So mm-hmm. then I helped him out a little bit. We talked a little bit and I did come back. And when I came back, he was already expecting me because he saw me in a messy situation. Yeah. So it wasn't like, what are you doing here? It was like, yeah. I'm here. How's everything good? And then I said, by the way, I have this. And I show a, a painting. Okay. And he's like, you painted that? Mm-hmm. So I like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I trained in Italy, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he said, let me see more of your stuff. Okay. So I'm like, I have it in the car. Bring it <laughs> out. You know, I'm, I was always driving with all my paintings. Every time I finish a painting, I'll put it in the car. I'm like, you never know when you're going to use it, you know? That's Need awesome. It, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then that was perfect because then he saw it. He's like, we need to talk about the contract and the situation there. And I'm like. Oh, right on like, the spot. That's nice. Yeah. yeah He's that's like, great. And it was like a Wednesday. And he said, Friday, I have a group show. Get me something framed by Friday and we show it and see what happens. That's amazing. And they sold it on that Friday. So wow. the whole thing was wow. such a nice beginning that then we kind of do you think you getting friendly with them was one of the helping factors was it necessary to make i wasn't getting friendly though like familiar or or seen yeah you have to communicate i think Mm -hmm. the best thing was communicating that i knew my position Mm -hmm. and i knew his position i respected his position can we talk that was my behind the scene kind of Mm -hmm. approach Mm -hmm. you know it's a great strategy because you started off without you didn't like just open the door walk in show the guy the painting too much to take Yeah, yeah exactly you you first kind of just talk to him smoothly and then you said this is my artwork and of course without going you know without even mentioning that the artwork has to be at a high quality yes you you were naive walking in there being like hey this is what i did five years ago uh do you think you're interested you were kind of prepared and it made sense that this guy who owns a business would maybe you know profit from showing your your art and it's a win-win situation mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's 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 a great way to to strategize when you approach a gallery yeah no you have to be prepared i think mm-hmm. if you're not yeah that yeah. shows okay so how long did you uh show with uh, this gallery are you still with the oh no not anymore that lasted mm-hmm. that was a four-year contract okay. and that lasted for three years okay because after three years um I had other opportunities coming my way and I was trapped because I signed a, you know, yeah. exclusive contract. Okay. It was and exclusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I, I said, I have no career. Yeah. So I let him know that I'm willing to not fight for shit that doesn't, I don't care for yes. as much. Yes. So for me, I wanted to live the career of the artist. And yes. if he would have said no, I would have gone to my next top yes. in the list. Mm-hmm. I was lucky to get that one. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to live the life of an artist. I didn't want to focus on money, anything. Mm-hmm. So I even accepted mm-hmm. and offered more for him than what the gallery standards are okay mm-hmm. so he can be winning with me more mm-hmm. so he will p- put me in special places and pay attention to me okay. because it's a long-term relationship and he's mm-hmm. going to be profiting a lot from it so i said all i want to do is be in art fairs and i have a and have paintings hanging in a good place mm-hmm. and so that was my strategy now the money was enough for me to make a living and and be able to paint for that purpose mm-hmm. uh so a lot of my friends and even though I didn't tell them specifically, but I, they knew that that guy was tough on mm-hmm. artists. Mm-hmm. And they was like, I cannot believe you're working with this guy and this, mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about mm-hmm. because I have, I have nothing right now. And he's my partner. He's the one. He's like, there's a reason why you work together with that. So I'll give everything I can for me to be able to learn from him. For me, it was school. You know, how do you mm. deal with a fair situation? How do you deal with deadlines? How do you deal with commissions? How do you deal with all that in a professional level? That's the best training. I will pay for that. Yeah. So instead of paying, I was getting paid. Yeah. And he was, the, the other important thing is that it, 
it was also an opportunity for you to actually do sales because I mean, you could be with another gallery where that's maybe more fair percentage wise, but that doesn't sell, which is make less. Yeah. yeah. More so, percentage, so, less money. We'll yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. So it just means the more you give, the more that person will give back to you. And, uh, that's the law of nature. Yeah. That's what happens. You give and, and people want to give back because mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, makes no. sense. Actually, that's the principle. That's why I wanted to come to America to build. Because I went to Italy and a lot of people say, why didn't you stay in Europe with the classical stuff? If you love it so much, you go back to Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, yes, I saw opportunities here. And I learned that the American way is you offer value mm -hmm. and people will pay you for it if, if they feel that you're legit. Mm -hmm. And I and for that, that was something that I could do on my own. And I didn't have the, I didn't need the contact or the connection. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It was on me. I took it as uh, my project, you know. And the, and in, in Europe, you didn't see as many opportunities for, for you to be represented or it's maybe harder to get in, in the gallery? Yeah, maybe because I'm not from them. I'm okay. from there. I wouldn't mm. be able to tell you specifically, but I felt that here people are willing to bet on younger artists and okay. pay them and support them and endorse okay. them uh, instead of just getting big names all the time. Yeah. I think because there's money in Europe too, but I think of the course, mentality yeah. of the risk taker okay. and supporting st okay, younger okay. generation huh. is, a, is a very young mentality. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. So after you said you've been with the, with this gallery specifically for three years, um, what was your, your transition from it? So you were starting to get more opportunities uh, that were coming? Yeah, I went to Sweden during that time, during I think my second or third year. Uh, okay. We went to Sweden for me to like explore another location mm -hmm. and uh, teach classical drawing and painting. And okay. that's when I started boxing and all that. So I kind of distanced myself physically from the gallery. Okay. But we already had a relationship, so I sent them paintings and stuff. But from far, I was able to see a little bit wider Okay. So then I said, okay, what are good, what are good or bad things by staying or leaving? So yes. then I did my math and I said, I'm going to risk the contract, lose mm -hmm. some paintings and, uh, and yeah, and get my freedom because I'm always going to be painting. I don't have to, f like when people found out how much I lost by leaving the gallery, they were like, that's insane. That's crazy. I'm like, no, oh, that's really? amazing. That's mm. amazing. I'm new. Huh. I'm like starting new with a new beginning. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Like mm -hmm. he could keep. The paintings. It's, it's kind of like when you first <laughs> went to Angel Academy, uh, kind of the struggle puts the pressure on you that you want and you crave to perform. So you kind of welcomed that you lost that income so you can go out and get more. Yes. When you, when you say you lost the paintings, did you, did you forfeit the paintings or did you just forfeit just the money from the... No, no. I mean, he had uh, an inventory of okay. mine, yeah, and then we had to agree on what to leave and what to take oh. in order for me to break the contract. Okay, because yeah. we were we agreed on something before. Oh, yes, man. no, but I mean, good for you for you not see, being so already, attached to those. You're already being negative, you know. <laughs> no, for me, it's like I'm like, oh, I want to keep them all, but no, it's cool that you could just let them go like that. Yeah, paintings are nothing. Like paintings are, I'm involved with my paintings when I'm creating them, mm -hmm. but as soon as they're finished, they're just paintings out mm -hmm. there for people to but so even if he be, has them or me yeah. ha they still exist it's not gonna burn them it's funny you know, you so say that, but, like, but at the same time you you collect you love uh collecting, oh yeah, yeah I love <laughs> so it's funny that to hear i guess you're referring to your paintings but then yeah, yeah my paintings yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then actually you do care about like other artists paintings that you buy oh and, yeah yeah like yeah. you have an incredible bugro that we had an oh, yeah. opportunity to see Beautiful. Yeah. i guess what my mentality means what i mean by that is that if you get right now this painting mm -hmm. and you destroy it you get mm -hmm. mad right now you get a knife you cut it mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to solve the situation as, as much as i can but i want it i would more pay attention to you why mm -hmm. you're doing that than the painting like okay. you know so the painting <laughs> he's also a guy with a knife <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 yeah so i wouldn't what i'm trying to say is that if something doesn't go your way <clears throat> change your way mm -hmm. so that it goes smoothly so that everything becomes positive and and, and opportunities open up because if you fight for what you thought and what you think then you feel frustrated sometimes when things don't go your way like, mm -hmm. that's what happens in nature but mm -hmm. instead of that like if you cut a tree it starts growing here you cut it there it starts growing. like you adapt mm -hmm. and you take everything as a welcoming thing instead of saying man i don't like that mm -hmm. no, i'm like yes but your attitude to do that has to be that the universe kind of has your best interest in mind so you know that if something is going not how you want it it's for you for your betterment well, I don't go that far. Like I don't do universe stuff. Like I go mm -hmm. me, like what is beneficial for me? A good state of mind or a bad state of mind? Mm -hmm. So if something, if I get a flat tire, I'm like, okay, 
let's have fun let's enjoy the process of putting a good time like mm -hmm. fixing yeah, this stuff like awesome. i see it as a challenge that I, i didn't think all the stars are doing this or anything like that mm -hmm. i'm like practical mm -hmm. okay makes yeah, sense. yeah so now you're in sweden what's uh first of all like how did you get the the idea or the opportunity to to move move to sweden and teach uh, I saw the advertisement in one website. They were saying we need a instructor of classical drawing or okay. painting. And I told my wife, we had the only thing we had is like my studio stuff and yeah. a mattress. Okay. So I said to my parents, "Can I keep your mattress uh, with you while I go?" And then we just took off. I, I apply and I got the job, and we just went. I just wanted the change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I believe everything that happens in front of my vision. Yeah. I pick. I pick it like whatever calls my attention. I explore it to see mm -hmm. what it is. There's yeah. a reason why it's in front of me. I happen to be in front of it. Let's see where it takes me. Yeah. So yeah. I saw that advertisement and I, it's, for some reason it got my attention and it took me more than five minutes to think about it. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. there's, there's something to this. Yeah. You know, so and now once you're teaching, did you see any, you know, did you see something that you, were you learning while teaching? Were you, you know, yeah. what was this yeah. experience? For oh you? my God. That, yeah. Or actually now you're, reminded me of this my technique was going a little by little going mm. worse oh really because you were further from the atelier at this point yeah the atelier when you're working in an atelier environment you have feedback constantly yes. so yes, you yes. inflate yourself sometimes thinking that you're good but you're good because of help because yeah. of the environment mm -hmm. yes. and then when you're by yourself you start being creative so mm -hmm. then you forget that strict approach and then you yeah. lack your uh, technique uh, you know suffers but then after that i said okay I, i saw that and i said if i go teach it i'm gonna revise it yes. and then i'm gonna get so exactly that's what happened i went there i started mm -hmm. training again so by teaching it i was having to be conscious of what i was doing yes yes, yes. And, and critiquing my work in a sharper way so then from there and did you have any peers in miami that went through a similar training uh who went to atelier system uh, among your friends yeah some people were but i don't i'm not like the group of people i don't like getting groups of people mm -hmm. i don't like meeting and on a regular basis with the same person or anything like yes, that. Yes, yes. Especially yes. for art. I, I think art has to be very personal. Mm -hmm. So the way to de develop it is from a point of view that is unique. Because the moment you start having peers, mm -hmm. you start painting with them in mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I see that happening with people from the academies. They mm -hmm. leave the academy thinking that they need to be loyal to their teachings mm -hmm. or their friends or the teacher. And then that locks you in to yeah. men a mentality that is not fruitful because as an artist, you have to be unique. You have to be mm -hmm. eccentric. You have to mm -hmm. call the attention and be silly and be mm -hmm. a loser mm -hmm. <laughs> So in a lot of ways, like sometimes at least for people's perception so that they can judge you and criticize you. So mm -hmm. in that case, where, uh, when you moved to Sweden, you were still, you felt like you gained that freedom But at the same time, you maybe were getting not enough feedback that you saw in your work. Is that is that what it is? You like, mean in Sweden? Uh, before you went to Sweden. Yeah, before I went to Sweden, mm -hmm. I, will, I well, I already had in my mind, I need to fix my technique and I didn't yes. know how. So the mm -hmm. moment I saw the Sweden opportunity, okay. it, it, it was like a light that said, this might solve your problem. Okay. So that's why I got into it and okay. said, hmm. There was a reason for it. By the way, uh, did you self-diagnose your kind of your technique going down or was it like this? Did the sales fall or were, were you strong enough to yourself say my technique is getting worse, even though the world didn't necessarily show you that? It, oh, I like to look at myself and critique it because mm -hmm. even even if people can critique you, if mm -hmm. you're not ready for it, you will ignore it. Mm -hmm. So yes, I did get a couple of feedbacks, even from my gallery or friends from abroad, on you know calling me on the phone and saying, "What about that flesh color? Why do you do that? <laughs> or did you work a lot on that background?" So mm -hmm. I will hit, I will hear notes, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, "Hmm." But I I know that for a fact that some people receive that information and don't care about it. Yeah, you know. So it is uh, self like even to this day, I do a lot of practice. That's why I keep my sketchbook work. Yeah. I'm I'm very disciplined in order to because that's what I love. I love perfecting my the craft. Yeah. So you're always open to the idea that you could improve, and you're always looking for critique to yes. i think it's gonna happen until i die because we're as artists you are achieving something that uh, unattainable mm -hmm. thing so you're looking for that on a table thing and yeah. it just goes forever yeah and uh, who are your guys while you're studying uh in uh, either in florence or even when you're um living in miami after uh, after you're you were done with your studies were there artists that were kind of keeping up this 
this level that you said, okay, I'm good, but I'm not that good. So mm -hmm. this is what I want to be, or this is, these are the inspiration characters. Would you mind naming maybe a few uh, yeah. artists? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, actually, at that time that I was studying, I did have different layers of mm -hmm. goals, like, because you had the popular names. Yes. You had, you know, Jeremy Lipkin was very mm -hmm. popular and his paintings were beautiful. Mm. Uh, Jacob Collins mm. with his school and also his paintings. So Daniel Green, you know, the old yeah. kind yeah, of yeah. living masters in realism. Yes. And I saw that as, as a very idealized world that I wanted to belong to mm -hmm. and be also measured because then you hear, I always got in, you know, conversations with the students talking about a specific guy. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, and I'm telling them, uh, don't talk about this person. Mm -hmm. they, let, let's do something that makes those person talk about you. What do you, mm -hmm. what do they do that you're talking about him? And mm -hmm. that's what you copy. Mm -hmm. Don't judge it from outside. Like yes. try to be that. Yeah. So I said, oh, as soon as I approached that, you started feeling with the gallery work and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, since I'm getting closer, let's yeah. look further. So I kept the distance of my goal. So then I looked to the past. Yes. Mm. To the point that after um, admiring everybody leaving, I'm like, okay, that's great. For my skills, I need to go back to the masters. And that's what copying in the museum created. Or So what would you say are your takeaways from teaching in Sweden? Well, the change was the most important part of mm -hmm. the whole thing, because as a professional artist, you want to be open to everything. Like you want to have, make sure you prove you try things out mm -hmm. so that you know what to get from it. Some people are close and they say, I will never do this. And in my mind, I didn't want to teach. I still don't spend that much time teaching, even though I feel to sh I feel like sharing stuff that is useful. Mm -hmm. So I did it to that point. But for me, it was a selfish attitude. Like yeah. I went to teach there to go through that experience of teaching. Yes, improve my technique, revise what I thought, but also how do I deal with people that are learning and what how do i deal with those questions so i think that was the main training for me i was mm -hmm. teaching that was the title but I, but i was learning mm -hmm. and that was the main thing that i was doing there and i realized different attitudes from from students that they can have uh, they can be stubborn and they can be dreamy so i saw myself a little bit of everybody because mm -hmm. you do have a little bit of everybody so you like so i was able to detect bad habits from good habits and see the results and say, I want a little bit of that. And I read to enforce myself here. So for me it was, and even with other teachers mm -hmm. looking at their technique, looking at the feedback. So it was a great atmosphere for me to be surrounded by like-minded people and study their behaviors mm -hmm. and results from those behaviors. So uh, what were some of the bad habits you were seeing in some of your students? Co uh, contradicting the teacher. Like I was younger, mm -hmm. I mean, young, well, of course, but I was also, you know, um, I would say stuff and they would challenge me with information mm -hmm. from Google. So they'll be like, oh, you said that Rembrandt <laughs> did that, but I hear that he did this. Or oh, it doesn't look like that. And so they would challenge principles that I was teaching. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I would always let it go. I'm like, yes, if you think that, that's good. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted to confront. They'd be like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> can you fight? You know, yeah. they wanted to look for, and I'm like, no, I, I, I do it like that. This is what I believe. I'm the one saying that. If you say no, I'm not, I don't want to buy that either. Like who's it, you know, I, like if, mm -hmm. it, if it makes sense, I will listen. But most of the time it was just a confrontational thing for them to make sure that they know the thing. So it was a mm -hmm. weird, sometimes that was very strange because of the same psychology that I brought. If you're the teacher, you respect it. Yeah. So they weren't getting the best, the most out of you by, by contradicting me. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like they wanted to just prove themselves, right? Like to know like, oh, I got what up on the teacher, right? Therefore I'm good versus maybe actually proving yourself through the uh, metric of mm -hmm. doing the good work, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly mm -hmm. that. Because sometimes that thing makes them feel good. It's like, oh, I challenged yeah. them. Yeah. They couldn't rebuttal the thing. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Is um, there any other bad habits you saw? Well, I mean, not working as much. That was mm -hmm. one of the problems, yeah. you know? Oh, I'm here or waiting for me to give them a critique to fix stuff. Like that's okay. So at the Angel Academy, you will get one critique per day. Mm. One in the morning and one in the afternoon because there are two subjects. You're painting either the model or working from a cast. So the person, the teacher, whoever is assigned will come and critique you. If you're waiting for that person to tell you what to do, and there's that's very common in, in students, they, mm -hmm. they're lost. If you're lost, invent like i didn't know like the guy passed and i will do what he wanted but i will go beyond it even looking for trouble to the point that i did a bar a bar copy overnight and i mm. took it and i thought it was done 
And they were like, okay, fix this. And I fixed it up and I did. And he's like, that's too fast. I don't, I, do it again. <laughs> so most people were doing that's four crazy. barred copies and I had to do six because at the last two, the teachers were like wondering if I learned the process. So he's like, mm. make sure you take your time. So they mm -hmm. forced me to take my time. Slowly on, yeah. But I try challenging the whole thing yeah. all the time. So mm. I, I rather, I, got, I learned this from theater. You give a lot and then let the teachers correct and edit you instead of waiting you for the push from the teachers. Mm -hmm. And that That's attitude really reflects in life uh, after because it's better to for you to test and try and then you learn by experience not to do it instead of never trying and you know not having that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So not waiting for the teacher to guide you but to take initiative and then get the feedback and course mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like you got more feedback because of that? Because you put yourself up more, there was more for them to actually no, no, they would say no, the same. You still got your one on one. Yeah, oh, they okay. still got. They didn't care. Okay. <laughs> They're like, okay, good boy, so settle down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, they will right. react differently. Okay, I didn't get any credit. <laughs> and what? For On the contrary, um, for you as a teacher, how, first, how long did you uh, stay in Sweden for? For that, I was uh, there for a year. Okay. Uh, the court, the I, I left a little earlier because of some trouble, so I didn't finish the the whole year. Okay. But I, it was a year. Yeah, I did 2008 and nine. Okay. Um, you know, course. And during this time, you actually earned a gold medal in boxing. Is that that right? was the same Great. time. Yeah, because well, when I was teaching, I was detached from my art, from my creation, mm -hmm. and it was more of a mental game and a profession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that time, but so I did. I had time in my mind to focus in boxing. Mm. In, it's something that I always regret. I regret it not exploring mm. and not going into it because I, as a kid, I was boxing, but something in me wanted to get in the ring officially and fight <laughs> to compete. Yeah. And I think that, and I saw the opportunity when I went to a gym mm -hmm. and I didn't have money, but I was hitting the bag and one of the trainers came and said, you box? And I said, well, I trained, but I never fought officially. And he mm -hmm. said, well, if you join us, you don't have to pay membership for the gym and we give you all benefits. And we sat down and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I call my parents, I'm like, guess what? I'm competing in boxing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be training for a team. Go ahead. I was going to say, were you ever worried about like hurting your arms and hands and wrists and stuff? Because like, you take a lot of damage as a fighter. So I don't know. Uh, no, no. I think I, for me, it's Protect more my story. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think I, I don't think anything about me is precious to not test it and exploit it. Like, mm -hmm. I believe the experience and the story is stronger. Mm -hmm. So I rather maybe risk that and have a story to tell or have experience and wisdom from it than not test it test it to stay safe. Okay. That's always been my attitude. Mm. Okay. So yeah, I had a motorcycle, I did stunts, like I did stuff that <laughs> were what? risky. People would be like, don't do that. But I'm like, I want to live my life. I'm sorry. You know, All I'd right. rather die tomorrow. So do you think that kind of that fighter mindset, that competition aspect, did that ever enter into how you conduct yourself in art and how you paint so. in your business? I think it's permanent. Yeah. It's the risk take. I mean, you, you know, you change your comfort zone, you know, the moment, for example, going from a gallery that represents you and you know, things are selling to say, okay, no, I need to change. I need to like, uh, get something where I feel like I would become better and therefore, you know, came Sweden. And so now what was the moment? What, why did you decide to stop the Sweden experience and, uh, get back to state? Well, after the gold medal. So I fought, I have four fights. Um, and I won all of them. Okay. Luckily. Nice. Wow. But, Undefeated. But all, uh, yeah, 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 that's too easy, you know, after four, I'm out. <laughs> Undefeated like champion Mayweather. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. some boxer was like, man, I missed my opportunity <laughs> to beat him up. But no, it happened naturally because I, I was training so like I was so focused on it. And mm -hmm. I think anything you get more into- More than art at that time? Oh my God, yes. My oh. art was suffering. I was just teaching. I was just there teaching with mm -hmm. a black eye from training. <laughs> so I would go wake up every morning at four and I mm -hmm. would run in the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I would tell Valentina, yeah, I'll come back. But were you just, doing it for the mindset to get more hard and to just get more tough? To well, become... that's the only way to- Okay, this is like, boxing taught me this that I apply to everything in life. Yeah. You work your best. You put your effort in training, preparing yourself just for the opportunity to compete. It's not even to win anything. Mm. You can do all that and still lose and get knocked down, you know, mm. knock mm. out. So even all that effort is not, you don't even earn anything or you don't mm. deserve anything after that. All that effort was just to get in the ring and start the fight. Yeah. So if, if, I see my life as an artist like this. I'm preparing myself. I'm exploring with my life 
to see if one day I'm able to be on the stage with the people how I envision with the masters or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's always like an overkill. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> overkill to to prepare yourself. So yeah, I was getting up, but I wasn't thinking this would make me stronger. It's like, I need to do this to be able to resist more than the other guy in the ring mm -hmm. because there's a lot of cardio involved in boxing. Mm -hmm. So technique, fighting and running, the whole thing I took it 100%. And what about the competitive aspect of it? Did it ever go into your art? Are you a competitive artist? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. so, especially with myself too, because in, in, in boxing, they measure against other people. With painting, you are the one that sets who the ideal, with who the enemy is, you know, who, who the person to beat yeah. is. It could yeah. be like, oh, this week is gonna be sergeant. And then you're like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna try. And then you lose, and you're like, damn, you got no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at least you try it. And that was yeah. the mentality. So I think the competitiveness is in me the whole time. Yeah. yeah. But it's a friendly one, I think. You know, it's not a frustration. It's not yeah. to win, it's to play. Yeah, you know, I, I know how you feel because I've always felt that art, I wish art was a more competitive sport where there, there's a winner and a loser. That's yeah, funny. Not to make people into a loser, me into a winner, but I wish there was like a me versus someone else in a friendly way. But you decide that though. You, It's up to you. I can do it in my mind, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for mm -hmm. instance, I do better in competitions that we are painting everybody the same subject. Um, I do better on those. Mm -hmm. um, and I've gotten, you know, my first prizes are on those. Like, if you submit a work and you don't even know the judges, you don't know the competitors, you don't know, it's weird. It's up to the organization's taste to yeah, select yeah, who the winner is. Absolutely. But if you're in a room with yeah. 10 people painting a model, yeah. it's more gauged. It's like, you can gauge don't, don't they have those, like art yeah, yeah. battles or something? Yeah. You yeah. go and you all paint the same model yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, there's a judge at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to do better at those <laughs> than when I submit it. Knock I think them out. <laughs> you were in a portrait painting competition like that where everybody was painting the same model. Where was that in New York? I did, the portrait one was in uh, GCA with uh, yeah. Jacob Colling School. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's a, uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it's a, portrait painting competition that we had three days, mm -hmm. three hours uh, each sitting, like each model. Mm -hmm. So we'll do, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, like that. It was fun. Yeah. I, I was able to win now. I, I got first place in that one, nice. but I trained my ass off before. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Like, of course I was you making don't sure. walk in there. And, uh, and, and that's it, good because it pushes you though. So then yeah. after mm -hmm. that, I learned, I learned yeah. and then I use it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the competing thing is just like, a, you know, like a challenge thing that you put, but in life, you want to make sure that you compete with your yesterday. Yes. Mm. That's what you're competing with. So uh, speaking of that, how do you make sure that you don't repeat what was done yesterday? Because, uh, so here you are, you know, after Sweden, you, you came back to States and now you're building your professional career as an artist and being so classically trained and, and always having these guys who were there before you, uh, how do you mark your voice? What's, uh, we would like to know your vision as a professional artist. What's your, what, that's what's a difficult one because that's for me, that's my goal. Like my goal is to find my voice yes. and not getting the museum or show. Yes. I want to be in our, our history books and everybody wants to be part of the art. Yeah. But yeah, uh, for me it's like, okay, what can I, how, what is something about me mm -hmm. that I, that nobody has mm -hmm. and it's my past. Mm -hmm. So instead of envisioning something that I would like to be like any masters I've seen, I ignore that. Okay. The only thing I look is that at their kind of overall behavior mm -hmm. and attitude towards life. And, uh, and then that's it. I, I look at mine and I said, okay, I was born in Cuba. Mm -hmm. I have a tendency to like these things. And then I apply that to my, to my truth. Even though once you do it, it might look silly or mm -hmm. even bad taste or something to an outsider. But if you keep doing that, then you become you. And then people start buying mm -hmm. into it and then you influence other people. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the difference is that some people have goals that are ahead of them and 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 that blocks you from accepting who you are. So mm -hmm. it, you always stay behind your vision mm -hmm. instead of saying, this is me, this is my vision. And mm -hmm. then you grow with it mm -hmm. rather than putting that pressure and you're never gonna be able to feel that you reached it. So, so by you, always exploring, sorry, Paolo. So by always exploring, you're you're in a way finding your voice and you're finding your own originality mm -hmm. and changing it up. I have mm -hmm. several series. Oh, one day I'm gonna paint the mannequin. The other time I'm gonna do syncretism. I'm gonna do a sketchbook series. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do crayons on top of my thing. Uh, photorealistic, you know. Yeah. So I'm always testing things that I get into to mm -hmm. see what they lead me and how do I find myself through those. I see. And you, you kind of you don't have any long term goals that you're locked into because you feel like it will influence what you're doing today. To too much mm -hmm. 
Mm. So you don't believe my goals are like weekly, monthly, maybe you know, maybe a show, but even a show like that. If I just cancel it, I'm mm. I'm a free agent, you know. Mm. So yeah, I I like short term things that I can feel. And that's very interesting because that's very different for me. Where I feel like I build a grand vision, and then by thinking about it, it starts to become realized over time. Whereas for you. The vision would be kind of distracting, and it would take away from what you're doing. It today. would limit me because what if something doesn't want to go that way, and then you get frustrated? Yeah. That's that's what I believe can happen. Mm. But if you feel comfortable doing it, I think everybody has their own strategy. Yeah, I'm not I'm not imposing my way. I'm just reflecting on it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I like I like getting up and saying, okay, this is my challenge now. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. What's an example of a short term target that you would set? Um, even a painting, like I'm mm. going to do three sketchbook paintings and one is going to be outdoors and, you know, mm. s- silly stuff like that. Okay, mm. so very practical kind of, okay. I see. Yeah. Go to the gym, make sure like, you know, I hit the gym at least, you know, five times this week or whatever. Got Short it. stuff that you can accomplish it because yeah. as soon as you do it, you get the shot of dopamine and, and that w- tends to want to repeat itself. So if mm. you don't want to do something, don't practice it mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it will, you know, if you're laying down on your bed and you stay there, the longer you get, you stay there, the longer you want to stay there. Yeah. So if you get up every morning, then you want to get up every morning, like mm-hmm. early, you know, it's like that's you get the, used to your behaviors. That's why it's important to kind of crush your morning, because if you start your morning off on a bad foot by being lazy, then you're kind of wiring your brain to be lazy the rest of the day. I force myself to smile every day. Mm-hmm. When I wake up, I'm like. <laughs> you know like if i hear That's something crisis. funny or something yeah it's like haha like a, 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 no, not even a joke or anything but i act like if it. so mm-hmm. the smiling thing is like mm-hmm. amazing it's gonna be amazing yeah nice. every day has to be amazing mm-hmm. you cannot wait for a day that is good i had a good day so you make On it who? a good day but with your attitude yeah you make it yeah yeah, yeah. whatever happens uh-huh. it was meant to be an amazing day because you see it like that even mm-hmm. if someone dies like that you love it's gonna be sad but mm-hmm. something about your life put mm-hmm. you in that situation learn from it become stronger miss cry whatever mm-hmm. but enjoy it the mm-hmm. positive thinking you can do Two things with a negative or positive. Yeah. Rather do the positive if you have to do it anyways. It, it sounds a lot like stoicism philosophy. Have you ever read any stoicism? Maybe not one that I can point out. Maybe I happen oh. to, because I listen to a lot of things and read a lot of things here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe. And um, what are some of your favorite books that you feel helped you in your life? The first one that I was really into and changed my whole perception of the career was The Law of Success by, by Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got the original version, 1925. So, 1925. so I, I, yeah, I didn't want to have a filter with today's kind of mm-hmm. language and mm-hmm. motivational side Mm. of things. I wanted to hear the original person, what he did, you know, Mm -hmm. even though it's harder for me to put into context because that happened in 1925, but at least it would give me the raw. And what did did you get out of that book? That there are certain common things that successful people practice. And then there are come that if you do it, you tend to have good results. And there are things that don't work. And if you do it, you will have bad results. So I learned that from that book and I'm like, okay, so let me focus on what for me gives me good results. Yeah, yeah. You know, that makes me think about uh, while just reading some biographies of painters that I admire. um, One thing that is in common is that a lot of them say that, you know, it's not that I'm so talented, it's that I love working hard. First, it's the passion for what you do and doing it 100%. Another thing is just simply going over and over and over. And specifically, I can remember uh, I was re- reading Ilya Repin's uh, biography and he was saying, he was saying, you know, I'm, I'm not someone who's overly talented. I'm just a working horse, I, you know? Yeah, yeah, I wake up in the morning and there are stories of him being like quite intense of uh, sleeping outside and freezing cold and he's very, or like spending endless amount of hours um, painting his paintings to the point where uh, Tretzikov, the owner of, of uh, Tretzikov Gallery, which is uh, today in Moscow, uh, he would ask people not to let Repin walk in the gallery and continue working on his on his paintings, if, you know, trying to always fixing it. Because in his, in his head, he was kind of like someone who is restless. And I find that although I'm talking about a, a man who lived over 100 years ago, it's such a great way to to learn about yourself today, where you can just uh, 
apply that skill of hard work and really doing the, the best you can to to get the most out of uh, out of your your artistic uh, success. You know, Caesar, you're one of the best YouTubers in art that I've seen. So clearly, you wow, <laughs> like with low standards. Yeah. It's like yeah, pressure I, on yeah. me. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but clearly, the landscape has changed with the introduction of social media, and the way that you've taken action on it is very admirable. So I just like to hear what do you think about social media? What's your approach to it? Well, there are different platforms, right? So um, you have to kind of adapt to each one as with the requirements that they are, you know, asking for. Yeah, yeah. And I and I think because we were talking about this before, and I and I see social media as the gathering place, like it was a bar in the 19th century or even you know 20th century, where people go and talk about ideas, and you show your portfolio, and then the guy says, "Oh, that's horrible. I like it," and then you talk about it. I. I approach it like that instead of too much preparing for it. Like if you, if you kind of have an idea of who you are mm -hmm. and, and that's part of the branding, like you want to make sure that you're consistent so that you become integrated and people can depend on you for a certain uh, spectacle, for a certain result, because that's why you are as an artist in a way you're entertaining, yeah. you know? Yes, you're thinking about stuff deeply and yes, you're like investigating and going through this journey, but at the same time, in a way, the byproduct is to entertain people and to um, make people wonder about stuff. Mm -hmm. So with that as an end result, you have to present yourself in the best possible way that wouldn't conflict with that goal. Mm -hmm. So if you present things that are too personal or detract from your story or makes you look different than what you want to show, then that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's easy. It's like going to a bar. What do you do? You address according to whatever the situation is and then you manage it. And, yeah. and that's how I do. So for if I always liked theater and I always liked to be in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. I was like actually, you know, pretty successful in terms of that I got, I did a commercials for several uh, companies. I oh, did a McDonald's that, commercial. Yeah. yeah. Really? That, that was my first. Yeah. That's like I had a job before going to the Academy. I had my agent that would call me and they say, they need a, you know, a guy mm -hmm. like you want to test it. And I got rejected most of the time, of course, but yeah. I did get some, some, of the, so I do love being in front of the camera. So mm -hmm. that felt natural to me. And I, and that was missing from my artistic career because I was inside yeah. discovering my own thing. Yeah. So I said, since I got blocked in, in, in uh, Facebook, that motivated me to say, you know what, I'm gonna just, since I can just get blocked at any moment, let me exploit this and let me use it to the best possible way. So I said, whatever people think, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna show my journey. And I think that is the important part of my YouTube videos is to show people, not to teach, not to impose a thinking, it's just to show what my mind is focusing on at that time and what I, as I move through it. So when people see my career, they can look back and say, mm -hmm. oh, that's what he was thinking in these videos, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, I do offer value uh, in terms of technical value, but the main value that I wanna share is observing myself in time, it's like a recording thing, and yeah. also inspire people yeah. to see that it's a journey, and you have to try mm -hmm. different things. And that part it actually is is quite incredible. Where I remember you were talking about <clears throat> at some point you were you were having quite quite a bit of success on Facebook. Uh, I believe one of your uh, instructional DVDs came out, and so for for people who don't know the story, someone reported the. Uh, you know, the new drawing and whatever. There are some people who are too jealous and they can't, I guess, accept the fact that there are people who can draw better than them or for, for whatever reason, somebody was felt that they they have a right of reporting an artist. And, yeah. you know, long story short, you got banned from, from Facebook, which for most people would feel like, oh man, it's a complete disaster. My business- Albums, like connection okay. with collectors. Yeah. I had like dialogues and messenger with people that oh. I got lost overnight. Yeah. And then Caesar, and this is for everyone to learn, instead of being pissed, he says, I'm gonna open a YouTube channel. Yeah, and you didn't like yeah. my post, now you're gonna see me talking about it too. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's a, such a fantastic attitude. Uh, well, that's what I meant before. Something comes that is not supposed to be your way. Yes. You make it your way. You're like, yes. okay, this happened for a reason. Facebook is getting old. It's changing. If 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 it if I'm so weak that a drawing can block me, mm -hmm. that means that I'm a piece of air. Anybody mm -hmm. can dictate my future. And mm -hmm. I said, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So I instead of I observe and I said, okay, that's what happened. Let me just keep 
keep growing like yes. a plant that you trim. Mm-hmm. Yes. They just trim one branch. I'm gonna open two more. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's how I took it. Yeah. Nice. So you're, it's kind of like your YouTube channel got powered up from that. So we're kind of glad it happened in a way. And also, it was a risky decision because now after a couple of years, well, it's gonna be two years in March, mm-hmm. and uh, I have over three million views already. And I that was a surprise. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Because uh, even the first video I I put I posted like with Valentina learning how to Mm. edit me like try to kind of do it and it was a little ridiculous like Mm. when i it's like risky because you're out there talking about stuff and people are like ha 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 but i'm like i'm the artist i'm supposed to be the person that people point at (laughs) yeah and and laugh at like Mm. if they want to so you know with that mind then you can grow in it and mold it your way and observe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so staying real and true to yourself and never trying to pretend to be something it's that's the best. Your, I think that yeah. because I see a lot of people failing in social media because they pretend they see yeah. the brands that are successful from the past. They don't understand that this is a new language. Yeah. And what people admire in social media is honesty and content. Like if you have something from your experience that you have built, mm. because if you fake it, you can learn stuff quickly and say a couple of quotes here and there from smart people. Yeah. And, and it's not going to go it's beyond faking the weak people. You have to, I think, show first have... Okay, the reason it was successful is because people wanted it. Like mm, mm. for years, people were, they were emailing me, do a video, show me this, show me this. So the moment I post my thing out there, everybody was waiting for it. Yeah. It's different, I think, that if I would have started too early. Mm-hmm. But I always approach social media with a mindset of success and a career, like mm-hmm. as a career. For instance, mm-hmm. my first thing was uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. That was 2008 or nine. I was in Sweden, I remember winter, looking out the windows, knowing I need to open my account. I didn't have social media in 2009. And I opened it, I didn't even have MySpace. Like my, I opened MySpace, someone, a friend did it, I didn't understand, it was so complicated <laughs> mm. that I'm like, this is not for me, I'm like. Mm. So anyway, so things got easier, so I'm like, okay, I can get into now. But uh, with Facebook, like for instance, I would go to a page that I would like an artist. Jeremy Lipkin was is an example, yeah. and I and I said, okay, so this is a community he's building. He has he's uh, creating this following, and people are commenting on his video, on his um, uh, paintings. images, paintings. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, for me, everything was new. So I'm observing. So then my intuition was, let me friend the people that are commenting on this type of art that I like too, because those people are gonna be connected to me. Mm -hmm. The moment I paint something, they might comment too and build my base Mm -hmm. with a good foundation rather than accepting my uncle from, you know. uh, So you, you, right away, you build your social media only as as, uh, like, career social media, not personal social media. Yeah, my yeah. life was personal for me and my mm-hmm. friends in real time yes. and life. And the, uh, social media, I saw it as your portfolio, as a presentation, yes. as your yes. website, mm-hmm. that is a moving and living, breathing website yes. uh, of different forms, you know, social media, um, um, Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. And that being said, I mean, you you produce quite a bit of videos and you produce quite a bit of content for uh, Instagram. And how do you, uh, how do you manage your time with uh because the 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 it's social media is a blessing and a curse uh it can consume a lot of your time and energy because you need to respond to people you need to make sure the content is good uh how do you manage how do you make sure that you still have a t- you know a lot of time painting and s- spend some time on social media or what's your view on uh, on this do you have a rule do you have like a day when okay it's only social media no i do it by whatever comes like go. whenever i'm painting i'm painting and then if i finish i'm like okay i have a break let me mm-hmm. think about a story to make or something okay Cool. Yeah, or a post. So or when I finish ongoing. a painting, I'm gonna post it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's like a result. It's actually the bar. It's yeah. actually my bar to go and chill yes, and hang yes, out. Yes, so yes, I'm gonna yes. be. Oh, who commented this? Yeah. I don't have time to respond to all everybody. You know, yes. I respond to questions that are interesting. Yes. Uh, if I see because a lot of people just ask ask for them. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard. And this is a good lesson in life. Like you need to offer value, not take all Absolutely. the time. And most of the re- most of the interactions in social media is people asking for stuff mm-hmm. because it's normal. It's like everything is there. Wow, 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 wow. How, how, how? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, look at this guy. I'm going to give you a million dollars. You know, mm-hmm. I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, like it's better to offer stuff, then you get back. That's how Mm -hmm. nature works. So for me, I do first my life, my career, my relationship, and then I have time for that as a, as a side thing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't have any company running it or nobody, you know, it's just like an intuition. Yes. But I do, I do post 
a lot of percentage is like my career stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then a little bit of personal stuff here and there i go to the gym i box um but and it's interesting because you see it as yes you are represented by a number of galleries yet you take responsibility for making sure that your career is in your hands because yes there is this kind of a common thing among artists where you know we I'll, you know, we do the, the pure job and, you know, the gallery does the, the dirty job of like selling, but it's, it's, it almost feels like, uh, it's actually artist's responsibility to make sure that you're represented the way you want to be represented. And yeah. Your brand is your responsibility and, and marketing too. Like, uh, because for me, a gallery is the cashier. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the mark, like the mark, let's say the supermarket. Mm -hmm. has aisles and they have different products and you i think of myself as one painter in a box in a shelf in one aisle mm -hmm. so and there is a full market full of different artists different people different things and then i think of my gallery being the cashier in front of it in front mm -hmm. in the front uh, like uh before the yes. door head. So, so then whoever goes through it knows how to find me, knows what to do with me. Mm -hmm. And then they do the thing because I don't want to be thinking of that. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to have the farmer taking the, doing everything, you know? Yes. Um, yes so yes. there are different things, but it's true. If you let the gallery dictate your branding, it can affect it because they don't, mm -hmm. they didn't grow up with you. Yes. So I want to make sure that I keep them informed and I keep them in the you know, with my vibes and my mm -hmm. intention. Also, their branding may not be, I don't think it's a chance to be as powerful as yours because what you're doing is real and you're expressing what you actually are. And that's always going to be the most powerful marketing as opposed to someone who doesn't know you trying to market you for you. Yeah. It can it's, never be as strong. Yeah. My, my instructional videos, for instance, when you see the clip, I mean, it has one has like over a million views, like the, my portrait of my wife mm -hmm. as an instructional video. But if you see the, co the commercial aspect of it, it's crazy because someone did it. So it's like, Cesar Santos, paint like the masters. Like I couldn't be able to say that to myself. Like, yeah. oh, if you want to paint like the masters. <laughs> yeah. Although you're quite an entertaining guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I would say it differently. Yeah, I would be like, course. hey, what's up? This is oil. Yeah. This is me. Like I would say it my way. So in a way it's good sometimes to, to have that ridiculous aspect. I side of you representing mm -hmm. you because mm -hmm. people know is selling time yes. and this is meant for this mm -hmm. and then but people don't feel it you see the comments oh my god over exaggerated overacted you know and and that's true but that's part of the game you you're supposed to be the legit guy that does the discovering and then the people want to sell you they're yeah. like you know makes sense and it's good everybody has their role you know absolutely absolutely and so fr from uh, you know speaking of masters uh so there you are you're classically trained but yet you want to promote something different. You, when you put your your uh, art on social media, you know you often talk about first your art collection and your admiration of uh, of your uh, you know of artists who who have shaped you maybe as a, as an artist. But in your own uh, work, you you try to project your your own style, your own voice, which is very contemporary. And how do you find your own ground between something that is uh, you know very current? and yet stay uh, very classically trained. Uh, let's mm -hmm. say in your most yeah. current work, you've, you've produced these beautiful portraits, yet they have this contemporary touch in them of the bigger size. How do you find this, like, do you have any tricks? How do you find- Well, the uh, for me, mm -hmm. I think it's just being sensitive to your time. If you observe your time, it has particular qualities that never, ever existed yes. so if you see a painting by a master and admire it in the museum he was painting for also another world another crowd yes. so you cannot think that that poetry that he's representing there just because you admire it doesn't mean that that's what you have to reproduce in your time and that's i think that's a misconception a lot of people do that a lot of artists say okay it works there i feel it let me do it and mm -hmm. they feel very very deeply and they're like mm -hmm. i'm alive and i want to represent this beautiful thing and mm -hmm. i'm like yes but you're missing the note mm -hmm. of the poetry of today and when they were doing it those painters that you admire they were on the edge they were on the on that edge of what was accepted and what mm -hmm. was coming mm -hmm. in their time because otherwise then they painted the decorations for the church yes. and then they didn't make a statement nobody knows mm -hmm. their names you know yeah, yeah. but if oh, every time you hear a name in our history is because they got the, the their time and mm -hmm. took it either but if you keep uh, something of the past then you have a successful career if you're too much in front of it it takes like picasso mm -hmm. to to take it and make it 
um, impose it enough so that people turn into you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that much time and you're Van Gogh mm -hmm. and you just paint a lot in a short period of time, you can die without the fruits of it. And then, but he was on a note that was his time and beyond. Mm -hmm. So he missed out on the fruits because yeah. you have to get the people feel the connection and that's how you feel it. If you make an amazing painting, I make a Rembrandt reproduction and I take it to a fair, people will be like detached from it because that's not what we are for. That's yes. not what we are achieving. Yet at the same time, I've got to say that uh, this kind of makes me feel that we, 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 we focus so much on originality, yet uh, you're as, as much as you focus on originality, which is very common in uh, in contemporary art, you know, it's everybody's trying to make statement and this is how we end up with flat black squares, but you still are, yes, I want to be original, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to like just focus on just big statements without putting work in there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You guide it as mm -hmm. you have the responsibility of guiding that poetry. So for instance, I feel that this time is lacking the depth mm -hmm. and the, and the beauty sense of things, yes. but it's coming back. Like that's why, that's why young people are recollecting antique stuff or mm -hmm. wearing like vintage clothes. There is something about now that is missing the yeah. depth of the past. Yes. And I think I'm, I'm like, I'm doing, okay, how can I take these paintings and make them Re, you know, like contemporary, yes. but still rescue and turn the people. It's mm -hmm. like convince them that there is a better feeling in yeah, art yeah, yeah. that doesn't have to be raw and negative. It could be beautiful, masterful, but yes. of today. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of settle for something, you know? Of course. Yeah. but Because uh, what you're saying is a lot of what we find beautiful in the old masters is actually how they related to their world at the time. So if we like Zorn or Sargent, it wouldn't work to paint like Zorn and Sargent and dress people up in those costumes right now. We have to look at how they reacted to their life around them and then find a way to react to our life, our contemporary life around us today. Yeah, there's freedom. Actually, there, there's nobody uh, with bias. I mean, well, of course, there's a lot of people with bias. But what I'm saying is that there's not an institution against a certain type of art. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is against something is a vibration that is not from today. If you if you're using if you're having that note that is not doesn't belong to today, it's not the people's fault. It's your fault that you're not communicating. You know, so yeah, that's that's very important to to know the difference. And do you think some artists uh, get caught in that because they're too they're not communicating who they really are? They're not true to is themselves. That, so they no, communicate I think they're true something. to themselves. I think they feel that they're honest. They're like, oh. I know what's good and this is good. Mm -hmm. and, and I think because I've talked to them, to a lot of artists that want to rescue that and they feel it. I, I see it differently though. I see that that's what we have and that's what we need to play with. Mm -hmm. Like instead of neglecting it completely and living in a bubble. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's like, it, it ha but you still have to, like as an artist, you have to have this idealized world that you envision and impose it and keep doing it. But it cannot be already something that has been proven before. It ha you have to test new waters. That's the only thing, that's the only way that you make something new. And to advance the art field, uh, not just repeat the same yes. things we've been doing. Yeah, twist it. But when you, when you meet these galleries at these shows, what do you kind of look for? What are some red flags that will make you not work with a gallery? Or what are some of the good things that make you want to work with a gallery? Well, from my experience, I don't I don't search for feedback from other people. That's the first thing I do mm -hmm. because I, sometimes artists call me and say, "What do you think about this?" and "What was your experience with that?" And I said, and I so for me, I don't I realize that the relationship between the entity and me. So mm -hmm. if they did something bad to someone or someone warns me, I listen to it, but I don't trust because yeah. it, it's so many combinations that you can mislead someone by doing that. So the first thing I do is having a good relationship with the person and understanding that nobody's superior or inferior. Mm -hmm. It's a partnership. I have a value to offer. They have a value to offer me and it has to be very clear. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that is that comes across, then my next um, observation will be, where are you taking your artist? And how often do you exhibit them? Mm -hmm. So that's important because that's a room that they have that they need to present me. You know, if they're going to take money, they better yeah. invest. Mm -hmm. So if they go, for instance, to art fairs, that mm -hmm. for me is a must. Yeah. I love being in art fairs because mm -hmm. that's where the vibe is. That's where the energy is and the market is like mm -hmm. the supermarket for art. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you go and put yourself in the aisle so people can Oh, it's see amazing. You. Like being part of Miami Art Basel means a celebrity that you've, 
listen to when you're a kid could go and buy it and, and be exposed it's, it's to serious, it. It's really amazing. It's a very serious uh, trade show in a way. Yeah, and as an artist, you're surrounded with paintings from other artists, yeah. galleries from around the world, yeah. so you have a taste of what's going on exactly. in one venue. And for me, that was imp that's important. So if mm -hmm. they go to art fairs, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. If they are in a good location that is, doesn't look like a store, because also you have a branding. Like for instance, me, I love the idea of the classical art in a contemporary way, and that's what I'm offering to my generation. Mm -hmm. But you can mislead people if you're represented by a gallery that looks like a store. Mm -hmm. If you if you are in a in a walk uh, walking place and you're open, and then you have this, and it looks like a store, it has. I mean, it will all be a red flag because for me, I want to be in a place that looks with that has the energy and the vibe of today, mm -hmm. like that urban, yeah. profound, like not not dealing with superficial uh, the decorations. You know, mm -hmm. I want to go straight to the painting, like mm -hmm. without the frame. Like my frames is just a floater. It's about the art. Yeah. And before, yeah, you put it in a castle, then the, the, the frames will match the architecture. Now it does too. Okay. Architecture is a warehouse. You yeah. don't put a frame on it, you know, yeah, if it doesn't yeah. have the... So you want to play with the setting and the presentation. So yes, I do look for galleries that understand what I'm heading and they present it in the best possible way that I can uh, envision at that time. And mm -hmm. also, I guess, uh, a, a gallery that would understand your needs. Like, for example, I know that you're working on something new all the time. Recently, you've been exploring the idea of uh, exhibiting finished uh, paintings from your sketchbook. And uh, I guess you, it's such a unique approach to painting. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of anybody, maybe I'm too ignorant, but I haven't heard of anybody else do that. And uh, it's it's really great that you are able to to communicate that to, to your dealer and explain, look, I need time. I need to uh, kind of like make sure that I'm Cook ready. this, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's part of that. It's, it's a game, you know, art can be so... That's why it's celebrating because it's just a free thing that you test. Yes. You don't even know what's going to work. You're like, I'm going to do this. What if I make sketchbook pages as final paintings yeah. and then mm -hmm. present that idea? Oh, it doesn't work. People still think it's a sketchbook. Okay, mm -hmm. so change it. Yeah. So it's like a game. You're always constantly doing that. Yeah. It's never, oh, I know this. Let me... I don't, I don't believe any other artist I admire did that. So they're always playing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're always changes. open to... You're always open to uh, the idea of, of pushing yourself further. And I guess from what I understand... You only want to uh, you want to make sure that the person who sells your work is able to accept that mm -hmm. because th uh, I hear so many stories where you know a gallery if you let's say are I don't know a, a guy who paints apples oh, as, yeah. as an example you are gonna end up being a guy they, they want to box you in yeah because yeah. you're you branded yourself as the apple guy and and every time you want to shift to something else. The deal is like, look, I'm not sure. Uh, you know. Maybe, maybe because the Apple guy doesn't even know. But I think, let's say, if my attitude is changing, mm -hmm. then the dealer knows that my attitude is changing. Maybe mm -hmm. after a year of the same thing, they'll be like, why haven't you changed? You know. Yes. So as long as your branding is consistent to you, with yes. you, it's true. Like if you have painted apples and that's what you feel comfortable with, and that's what you have been branding, suddenly mm -hmm. changing uh, to painting landscapes might be weird. Nobody can read you. Mm -hmm. So I understand the problems of doing that as an artist when you're drifting and you're just looking without a specific purpose. You know. Mm -hmm. But if you if you know what you're doing, it does feel integrated and then it's easy okay. to communicate it. And then it's, there's no problem changing. Mm -hmm. Like in history, there are painters that did the same thing over and over and there mm -hmm. are painters that change it all the time and it's fine too so right because it, it makes sense because you're an ever-evolving person that you're learning you're reading books you're not staying static in your personality so why would your art stay the same no it reflects you yeah if you're the best artist you can be is the one that mm -hmm. that shows your life another thing is that times change and we spoke with, before about the importance of reflecting uh, the today's kind of, uh, you know, you as an artist, it's important to you to, yes, you're a realist, but at the same time, you are part of today's uh, art community in a way. And uh, as time goes by, things change because today, what what's, you know, today, today is going to be, you know, tomorrow is going to be yesterday. So yeah. therefore you evolve. And, uh, and in a way, like, it, it's important to not only to evolve, but also being able to, have someone who's able to respond to that. Yeah. Um, and considering all this evolution, I guess it's going to be hard to answer this question, but 
having said that, where do you see yourself in five to ten years in your art? Where do you see it going? Hmm. My goal in the future, whether I don't know how many years it will take, probably longer than five, but um, will be for me to develop my technique and my and my poetry mm -hmm. to to match uh, what I feel mm -hmm. that I should be doing because you know it's a discovery. You uh, yeah. first we didn't start by painting, so you first have to learn how to paint what they teach you, then you paint what they taught you, then you paint what you like. So there is a filtering. You know, a to, process to get to the real you, that there is a moment, a, yeah, that you to, become a person that nobody knows where you study, nobody knows, and nobody even you don't even know what you're all, all yeah. you know, up to because that's when the real thing starts working. Mm -hmm. in so, a you're in the process way. of discovering yourself and who Caesar is as an artist. I think always I point. commit myself to that always, and that has mm -hmm. to be my goal. So, I hope in five years I'm better than I'm now because I feel that now I'm, I'm more. I'm close. I'm closer than five years ago, so uh, so if I just keep that, I'd probably be there. But I tend not to think about that. I want to make that clear. I don't have like a long term goal. Mm. I love enjoying my life day to day, and maybe yeah. in five years I'll be an actor in Hollywood that they give me this role, and I forget and I don't paint for a year. Yeah, uh, that would be tough to believe. But yeah. but it could it could happen. I'm open to possibilities. I I like I like the idea and breaking from the myth that the artist should suffer and the artist should do this yeah. sort of stuff. No, I want to have like a nice happy amazing life while discovering myself hmm. and painting you know and it's part of your personality i mean you're you're even if let's say we didn't know you as a as a painter if we just uh, you know met you somewhere at the bar yeah. you you have this vibe about you where you're you're very active very curious you're very, passionate yeah. alive yeah. And yeah even this interview you're like <laughs> jumping around <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well i'll be i've been protecting this uh, area here yeah. thanks yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's fantastic. Also, no, it was great talking to you guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you provoked some uh, history Absolutely. and thoughts. Caesar, it was such a privilege. I mean, first, thank you so much for having us at your studio, at your home. Uh, I mean, we really wanted to do this in person and, you know, came all the way from Montreal to cool. Miami. Thanks. That's fun. It was really, really great. Thank and you it, so much. It was absolutely phenomenal to see your art collection, your your works you're working on. So huge. Yeah, it's a real inspiration for us to see your studio, to see your work. So we really appreciate it. And if you guys want to check out his amazing YouTube channel, you're going to see everything about who Caesar is as an artist and as a man. I highly recommend it. And Thank you. also, he's got three instructional videos out that will educate you. So check those out as well. And thank you so much for listening to the Creative Mastermind Show. Catch you guys next time. Thank you so much. So let's wrap this video up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Perfect. My check, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Good one. All right, Caesar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank All you right. so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you.